In Fijicam 2014 R2, you now have more control when creating Z-level roughing toolpaths, with a new option to set the direction in which the toolpath is offset. You can now, with three simple radio buttons, select whether you want to machine the part from the outside in towards the centre, from the inside towards the outside, or using an automatic option which chooses one or the other of the two options based on whether we have a core or cavity shape being machined. This also improves consistency for users of both FeatureCam and PowerMill because the options are also there. Now in this example we have a particularly difficult part in terms of its shape and form because it's difficult to automatically identify whether this is a core or cavity shape. Now traditionally when we were using FeatureCam when we created our uh, machining operation we would have got the default automatic option. Now in this case we want to machine from the outside towards the inside. If we go and have a look at the toolpath form, go to the Z level and over to the strategy page, you can see the new area is indicated here as the offset direction. In this instance we've also set the slice classification as being a boss. Let's close that off. I'm just going to say hide all the features. And then click centerline simulation to calculate the toolpath. So in this case we can see the tool is moving from the outside but the shape is not exactly what we want. You can now see it's working its way from the centre to the edge of the component. So trying a different method, if we swapped from our slice classification from boss to pocket and again hiding the feature in a single step again you can see it's starting from the center so slice classification would not help us in this particular instance so the new option in this case we've set two different feature types. We've got the rough boss outside in. And you can see here out in has been selected and we have our classification set back to boss again. Again calculating our toolpath. You can now see the tool starting from that location and continuing to work from the outside in. The final method is using the pocket type method and again checking our Z level this is using 3D pocket out to in and again hiding my feature calculating the toolpath and get our toolpath form like so. This gives us our desired toolpath in this particular instance. We can play a 3D simulation just to verify we're happy with our toolpath shape, working away from the outside of the component in towards the centre.